Good morning, Saturday Superstars. We had the one game last night, obviously Manly, up against the Eels there, and some good scores, some pretty average ones at that as well. We can't seem to avoid at least sort of one bad popular player score per game at the moment. So we'll go through the fantasy scores for this game and then catch up on the Supercoach scores as well. And we've actually got updates already for th the first three games. So happy days on that front, much earlier than normal for that as Supercoach. So if you don't know the fantasy guys here, that um, Supercoach updates are used, like if the Thursday night game, they might update it on Saturday if you're lucky or Sunday, like just before like the 2 p.m. games or something. So crazy. All right. Frustrating times, frustrating times. Mr. Ruben Garrick picked up an 85 in this game after, you know, we were saying how high his break even was. And I really, really hope that a few of you did jump on and he is at 6.4%. So there's other people that held on from the start or a couple that sort of grabbed this week or last week. And those that were blowing up last week that any podcaster was, was telling them, was telling them that, that he was a, a good buyer coming up. Then, uh, there you go. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome for that one. I was kind of like, yeah, you can, you can, you can wait. You know, the break even's really high, and we got burnt on this one. Everyone, whoever didn't grab him this week, we got burnt because five thirty-seven k, very, very cheap. If he went anywhere near forty mark, he was going to be under five hundred, which is pretty crazy. So that's where people were holding off, seeing how things go. He didn't look that great last week, you know, you know, smashing. So there you go. But eighty-five in this one, two tries. Just looked great. Obviously, defensively, he got 20 tackles for two misses as well. He had 177 meters, big goal numbers, line breaks, tackle breaks, offloads. So everything across the board. Obviously, goal kicking centers, uh, yeah, a great a great way to go. Eventually, we saw at the start of the year he did well. A couple of blips, and now he's back to good stuff. So congrats to Garrick and any of his owners, center, wing fullback, Jewel. He'll be fairly highly targeted next week at a reasonable price, that's for sure. Hop good. 59, 74 minutes for him. So really, you know, it was a close game up until the last sort of 10 minutes or so there. And yeah, then they, you know, Eagles ran away with it with some some dumb dumb plays, really. There was the the Penasini one after a kick, tackling him. And then the Mike Acevo just trying to drill into Garrick's beautiful face. Um, so that didn't work out at all. And yeah, you see like the, the, the effort players in that team, just oh, Gutho and the like, just not happy at all with with how the proceedings were going, especially in a, in a game where, you know, they were in it. They were absolutely in it all the way through to the end. Um, Gutho, if he could kick some goals, that would be delightful. And they might've been a good chance being ahead at that point when it was 20 to 18 there. And even Brown had a go in uh, in the end there. So there you go. Uh, but hop good 59, a good bounce back for anyone who was, you know, looking at selling him. Yes, it's not exactly where he's priced at. Like it's, you know, around that now. It's not what you bought him for, but 59 is good. You'll take it. The team's just really poor at the moment. Right, Madison. The reason we didn't speak about a lot of these Eels guys as a buy this week is because, you know, they have, they do miss next week. So, and they're a team that's playing really poorly. So as you can tell here, there's only, there's a few players that are, you know, did score well in this game, but then there's plenty others that, um, you know, weren't able to. And obviously this one was a bit more high scoring. They had, you know, four tries attached. And uh, we know that against the Eagles, there's there's going to be points on offer. And that's why a few of the attacking players here were able to score points, but we weren't expecting it you know, going forward until Moses was to return because the effort last week was was horrendous. So it ended up working out that a few of the players did pretty well this week, but um, we aren't expecting it longer term at this stage. Um, it's just because the Eagles have been letting in a fair few tries. Madison was on like 30 and 20 odd minutes, so picked up a 58 in the end, slowed down that PPM, but we know what he can do in an edge roll. And Cartwright, the reason that he missed this game was to, you know, the rib cartilage is still playing up. That was pretty obvious based on his scoring and, and his output across that few games since he's come back. It's been absolutely terrible. He's lost a stack of cash. So this was a great opportunity to get him a you know, two and a half, three weeks rest on the ribs before he can come back in that following game. And they need him to be at his best because when, when he was playing well, the um, the Eels were so dominant. Dylan Brown, 57. So yeah, just a lot in this game. Obviously, fair bit of running. Gee, I wish that line break he did, he actually looked on the left. Oh, you wouldn't believe it that the, you know, the fullback, the effort player fullback was was streaming down the middle on the left. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let him slide. I've just got, I've got Brown in the head to head team and my super coach team. So I was hoping for a try assist there, even though I don't own him in my, you know, main overall team there. But yeah, 57 was good. Got the line break, tackle breaks with galore, um, offloads, kicking the footy, bit of everything. What we expect from from Brownie is, is the main half. So 
if you've got him over the last few weeks now, it's a, you know, 53 average for the, you know, or for 52 and a half there for the 48 and the 57, which is cool. Mark Acevo, as I said, there's the dumb plays that he makes and you can understand why Arthur dropped him the other week. There's just, you know, he, he's played for that long. He can't be doing that stuff. With 10 minutes to go, you're down two. Just ruined the game for him, that's for sure. Gutho, I was so happy with this output. Like, I think he got to 30, 31 by half time, and I was I was actually hoping pre-game that he would get anything over a 30 would be delightful. And he got there by half time, which was great. With two try assists, three line break assists, uh, and three offloads there, which was great. Um, well, four with one to ground, but 139 meters. He looked a little free. I didn't have his knee brace on. Kicking, obviously kicking goal is not his strong point. Um, just has a nice fade, doesn't he? Just slices across it. His body ends up on the left-hand side for anyone who sees that. Most kickers, they really kick through the ball nice and straight, like a like a straight drive in cricket. But um, yeah, he slices across it. And that's not going to help too much, especially when you're kicking from the sideline. I think that the draw is the way to go. Like, unless you, if you're going to have a big a big movement, it needs to be the draw, I think, the, the Thurston special, especially from that left-hand touch line. Um, the fade just makes it way too hard. Uh, and you don't have that power either in, in the fade. So yeah, there you go. Um, Dylan Brown kicked his a little bit straighter. It was just wide of the mark. Uh, but yeah, 51. I think that's enough guys to hold him now because like, I'm really happy about that. He gets a, he gets basically two weeks off now until the next game, which is, which is massive. So yeah, you'll have training and stuff and he'll, he'll manage that. But I do suspect that I'll be able to hold him now, which will be great. And yeah, you know, him over the origin by period, even if it isn't spectacular, it's going to save me a trade in a wing fullback position where I need, I need a wing fullback basically. So Gutho hopefully is the man to, to see me through that. And if he can use, utilize this rest really well this week, and then he can eventually get Moses back and the like, I think it can be very helpful for his output and I'll be holding him next week. Joey Lassick, on the other hand, we'll have to <laughs> sort that one out. DCE 49, nice try through the middle, good try assist, a um, couple of line break assists down that right-hand side, which was lovely. That one he put Saab through to, to get back to turbo was massive there. But yeah, two low ones, two or lower ones in a row for daily. Olukawatu 49, oh, just popping Sean Lane on his neck and head. Wasn't wasn't nice viewing and, and got the sim in because of it, but he came out and um, still picked up a 49, a lovely offload for Garrick's first try. And you just know that you're going to get attacking stats out of Hamole for sure. So good work on his front to come back from that, but um, oh, he probably has a little bit to worry about for sure in um, judiciary. We'll see how that goes. Simonson and Harper, didn't play too bad, to be honest. You know, Harper there with a couple of couple of try savers. He he obviously had some lapses in the back end, but that was with Sivo out uh, in the sin bin. So hard to judge him too hard on that. He made 22 tackles for four misses. Not the end of the world. They scored a few tries, but as I said, it was at the back end um, when when he was out, Sivo. Uh, Jerbo, how good was he? Going through the middle, streaming through the middle for a try assist as well. Good stuff on his front. Uh, Corey Woodell, 39 in this one. So... It was just a base stack game, not much on the running side, 51, no offloads, just a couple of tackle breaks. So you wanted a little bit more attacking stats. This is kind of what we expected on the tackles front, but um, the other the other parts of his game weren't available in this one. He didn't download the expansion pack, as they say, but uh, 466K, mid-edge jewel, 39. You've picked up you know 45 into a 39. It's exactly what, exactly what I expected. 42 is the average when he plays over 60 minutes in you know on the edge and that's exactly what he's got over the first two weeks so you can't be dissatisfied with that obviously you'd hope in the 40s but um yeah just that 40 plus looks a little bit better than 39 but it doesn't matter it's a couple of points uh palo there cola decent scores for them with where they're at to be honest at the moment um junior's gone down 100k ethan sanders so it looks fairly good at the start there he, uh yeah he showed a lot of class in that first 30 minutes and then obviously the second half Nothing really happened for him, missing some tackles. He had to defend up against Olakuatu. Like, if there's any game you want first up, it's not against Olakuatu. But he um he held his own for the most part. Um, some good touches, you know, squaring up into the line. That one getting it out to Gutho, who got it out to Sivo for that try assist. That was lovely. So um yeah, he's got a, he's got a long future in this game, and it's a tough one to come up against Olakuatu. Garrick DCE on his first try. Uh, off in Gawe, 34. Da, da, da. Panasini, 32. Obviously, the Sinbin hurt him. He he looked pretty good when he was out there. Obviously, 64 run meters, not great. Um, but 32 with a try assist, a try, a, a line break and a, a line break assist. That was good. 
just not defending as well as he used to. He, he, he's got a few different partners every week at the moment. So yeah, there's that. Holding on if you do. Turbo. I'm seeing a lot of turbo hate. And fair enough. He scored the same as Joey Lusick. Fair enough. And Brooks, apparently, 27. But um, a try, a line break, two line break assists, and still only 27. No tackle breaks. That's the that's the toughest thing here. With all the fullbacks in the game, the good ones that in fantasy are, are doing really well, they're all getting tackle breaks. They're getting offloads. And that's where sort of, you know, that 15, 15 to 18 sort of points comes from. Is anywhere, well, it has, can't be 15. It has to be uh, an even number. 14 to 18 points, let's say, comes from the tackle breaks and the offloads. And that would put Turbo with these these stats up into the 40s, right? Which is exactly what you need from him, given his price about 48. So he was averaging that. He was scoring pretty well that each and every week, give or take 10, 10 or so. And then has the low one. And a lot of people are saying, sell, sell, sell. We won't have any trades left, guys, if you sell all of the top guns. And they're allowed to have a low one here and there. I don't see you guys blowing up about Teddy when he goes when he gets to 30 to then come out and get to 40 the next week to have a head knock game. Turbo hasn't had this. He's been very consistent. This is a poor game from him. You have to hold. I understand people like, oh, he's not moving as freely and stuff. Yes, he's changed his running gait. So he doesn't look as great. Um, but yeah, no tackle breaks and offloads. He needs to sort that out because that's not good enough. But outside of that, he was there to back up tries. He got a line break in there afterwards. It wasn't a line break with a try. He got a couple of line break assists. He's doing good things out there. Most weeks he's scoring well. This week it wasn't. Leave it at that. Brooksy, 27. He does not look like a fantasy player at all. He needs to be sold straight away. Joey Lusick, one run. The one run that he did, he dropped the ball. They stole it off him. Bro, hold the ball. 30 tackles, no misses. That was a big win. So I'm very happy with that front. But he's in my loop slot. Loop slot, And I'm like, oh, how do I even loop that? You know, my, you know the guy I'm covering him with is? Give you one second. Danny Levi. Is Danny Levi going to be able to outdo him at 27, Joey Lusick? I'm not sure. But anyway, Joey's gone off this week. 53 minutes? No, it's a no-go. Expect Brendan Hans to be on the bench again. Obviously, if they have some players back, then maybe they don't. Like if Cartwright comes back, maybe Madison stays. But still, it's not good enough. He's um absolutely lowered his bar since that first few weeks. And it's not been good enough. I've got Grant and Levi at the moment to cover hooker and... I'll either use Levi in round 13 as my hooker or I'll just um, trade someone else in because Lusick on the bye next week, not playing well. He's going to lose a bit, 15K or something. 510K, I can use him to get anyone in a decent range, right? So yeah, that's where I'm going with Lusick. Tommy Talao, 27. If you need to play him, that worked out all right. Sean Lane, the frustrating 21, but again, yes, 56 minutes in the end. They brought him back at... Uh, you know, weird point in the half rather than straight back on. So there you go. Because Tekel may end up playing the, the 25 minutes before he came back on. But um, he's just not scoring well when he's on the park anyway. You extrapolate it out to 80, it's a 30-odd. It's not great. Uh, but that's it. Brendan Hands, 11. Thanks, bro. Coming on and having three missed tackles and an inside 10 to steal some minutes off my boy. But yeah, that's it on that front. Oh, Matt Lodge, people asked me to speak about it and he went low. 19 and 28 minutes, so definitely don't see him as an option. Uh, just a quick update. They've got, um, as I said, the updates are in for these games. The Waz up against the Titans in the first one. Adam Fenua Blake at 116. He just really makes your front row forward look pretty and scores well uh, for sure. Johnson, 93. Obviously, the try assist really, really helped him out in this one. And, uh, yeah, hopefully he matches that of um, Cleary for those that don't have Nathan. Uh, Chance with 90. Anytime he gets attacking set a try assist or a try, he's going to go like 70, 80 plus because his base stats are just phenomenal at the moment. 40 odd to, to 50 odd in just pure base. Um, and then you get the tackle breaks on top and and go in with the um, the try as well. He's special. Very, very special. Uh, Roger got the try disallowed, obviously, through the Egan drop. Egan's still 50, so that worked out for him like okay enough. Better than uh, what a lot of other hookers have been scoring at the moment. Big news on the other side, David Fafita, 126. Even in the 60 minutes, just scored over two points a minute. Incredible. Brimson there, 94. Really, really good score. Center wing and fullback. If he manages to keep the fullback spot, then he's an interesting buy. Obviously, at a fairly cheap price at 588. But after Garrick's score, he's probably a buy um, before him. 
Jolliff with uh, pure base for 63 was great. Both for more in my team, 59 there. Happy enough with that, without the attacking stats. And I hope that that comes eventually. You got Mo Fodawaka dropping in price as well. Dragons Roosters, obviously there's going to be some points for the Dragons there. And, and Sam Walker clearly dominated with 172. Absolutely incredible. 40 in goals, 48 in tries this 17 with the try. Um, and three force dropouts to get 18 points there. It was incredible. Angus Crichton, 119. Wow, impressive player. Um, Manu with 87, so still worked out really well for him. Tedesco, 81. Good stuff overall. Um, and then, yeah, Terrell May, 29. Brandon Smith, 28. Not good on those two. May's more of a sell. Um, it's not not terrible in Supercoach. He's a little bit worse for wear in fantasy with a 16. He didn't have as high of a break even in Supercoach, so not the worst in the world. Smith, up and down. The minutes, man, is just the killer. Like, he scored really well the last few weeks, but um, that one hurt him. On the Dragon side, really just Lomax, sorry. I must just skip them completely how poor they were. But Lomax, 62. Obviously, a little bit of an update there helped. Uh, Jaden Sua, Jack DeBellin. If you're holding Jack DeBellin, sweet. As I said, Flanagan last week, a sell. Moses Suli, a sell. Eisenhuth, 41. Did pick up a try, but um, moved to the center. So he'll be back in the middle soon. And then Storm Bunnies. Munster is back with a bang. So is Harry Grant. Good to see both of them get some attacking stats. If you're interested in Munster, he's getting, you know, he's got a lot, a fair bit cheaper. 682 years now. He won't be after this. After that, obviously, high break even, but he sorted that out. Quick smart. Harry Grant, 95, was good. Jerome Hughes, 95 in my team with Ellie Katoa. Yeah, they're all combined for some decent stats, obviously, there. Jerome at 750. Again, hopefully, he can match. He got the same score, basically, as, as Johnson. Um, so, hopefully, he can match Cleary, who I don't own. Papenhausen up to 92. That worked out well. Mini at 84. So good scores from both of those. That were my two trading targets in the head-to-head -head team. What about the head-to-head -head squad? Got Al has Olukawatu and I end up playing Sean Lane in that team. And Olukawatu dumps him on his head, gets sin bin. So I lose points there. And then Sean Lane was a chance of not coming back on. So that was frustrating. But yeah, Pap and Mini did really well. Eli Katoa, good stuff as well. Blow up to 53 with the, you know, the amount of offloads he had and Joe Chan, 39, making some good cash gains. And uh, Blory, I think after that 53, you can just hold off on clearly buying him. And Nick Meany's fairly cheap there at 630. He'll um he'll be a bit cheaper after that as well. And then the final one, the Eagles, you see Garrick's 138. This is all pre-updates, but um, a good score from him. Olakowatu saved his. DC 70, Turbo 53, obviously not ideal. But um yeah, try line break. Line break assist obviously gets some decent decent enough points in Supercoach. Luke Brooks at 37, has to go. It's disgusting. Last week, I think we can just hold. It's it's gross, but um, we don't need him next week anyway, unless uh, someone gets injured. Sean Lane, 30, tough. Um, and then, yeah, Brownie, 54. Not ideal, but got a line break and stuff. Hopefully, updates with a offload or two he had. And then Hopgood, 58. Like, he worked hard. He'll probably get to early 60s, but yeah, not ideal. Sanders, 59. He picked up a try assist in that and a, and a contribution. Good tackle numbers. Madison, 59. Keep an eye out on him if he does keep the spot, but I doubt it. Sivo with three tries. Gutherson, after people were saying that he was a sell, which is fair enough. It did seem like it was worth the hold one more week. Obviously, in the fullback position in Supercoach, less, less likely, especially having to sell him this week coming when you had Walshie and all these guys that you could buy. At a, at a cheaper price anyway. So there you go. That's the fantasy and super coach update for the Friday night game, singular. And I wish you all the best of luck for the two games today in the Tigers up against the Broncos and Cowboys and Panthers. So clearly, Captain is good luck and we'll see you in the next one.